OK, we are now live. Thank you. Thanks, Liam. Good, morning. Good afternoon, members, officers and any members of the public who are viewing the live stream of this meeting. Welcome to this meeting of the Employment and Staffing Committee. My name is Councillor Henry Batchelor and I'm the chair of the committee. I'm going to start with a few housekeeping announcements. Please can ever make sure that your device is fully charged and that your microphone is switched off unless you're invited to do so otherwise. When you are invited to address the meeting, please make sure your microphone is switched on. When you finish addressing the meeting, please turn your microphone off straight away. Speak slowly, clearly, and please do not talk over or interrupt anyone else. Please ensure that you have switched off or silenced any other devices you have so that they do not interrupt the proceedings. If you wish to speak, could you please indicate in the chat column? If we need to take a vote for any reason on any of the items, I'll ask committee members to speak into the microphone so that the vote is clear to the committee and also to those watching the webcast. Members should respond for, against or abstain when their name is called. To the committee members present, I'm now going to invite each of you to introduce yourselves. Members, after I call your name, could you unmute, wait a couple of seconds and introduce yourself, please. So, As I said earlier, my name is Councillor Henry Batchelor and I'm the chair of this committee. I'm now going to ask the vice chair, Councillor Dawn Percival, to introduce herself. Hello, I'm Councillor Dawn Percival and I am a member of the Willingham and Over Ward. Thank you. And then Councillor Sarah Chung Johnson. Hi, I'm Sarah Chung Johnson. I'm a member for Longstanding Ward. Thank you. And we have Councillor Claire Daunton, please. Um, yes, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Claire Daunton and I'm one of the members for the Fendit and, and Fullborn Ward. Thank you. Then Councillor Mark Howell. Thank you, Chairman. My name is Mark Howell and I represent the Papworth Ward. Thank you. And the first of two Williams is Councillor Heather Williams. Councillor Heather Williams and I represent the Mordens Ward. Thank you. And finally, Councillor John Williams, please. Good afternoon. I'm uh, John Williams. I'm the lead cabinet member for finance and I'm one of the uh, councillors for Fendin and Fullball. Sorry, I dropped out for a second there. Um, I think everyone, all the councillors have introduced themselves now. I'm now going to ask the officers present if they could unmute and introduce themselves as well, starting with Susan Gardner-Craig, please. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Gardner-Craig and I'm the head of HR and corporate services. Thank you very much, and Patrick Adams. Good afternoon, I'm Patrick Adams, Democratic Services, and I'm clerking the meeting. Thank you very much. And I believe we also have another officer, Chloe. Would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm Chloe Smith. I'm an HR business partner. Thank you very much. So those are the members and officers present. We have enough members for the meeting to be quiet, so we're going to begin. Um, if any member leaves the meeting at any point, could they please make me aware so that, that can be recorded in the minutes? Thank you. So I'm going to move on to the agenda now, starting with item number one. I don't believe we have any, but apologies for absence, please, Patrick. You're quite correct, Chair. We have no apologies. A full house. Good. Thank you very much. And then moving on to item number two, declarations of interests. Do any members have any interest that they need to declare relating to items on the agenda today? I'm seeing shaking of the heads, nothing in the chat, so I'll assume not. If anyone thinks of any while we're going through, just make me aware, please. Item three, minutes of the previous meeting. Members, we have the minutes uh, on pages one to four of the last meeting we held. Can those members that were here indicate if there's any inaccuracies in there or anything that's been omitted? Uh, we have one Heather Williams. Um, it was just about date of next meeting. It says Thursday 29th of April and obviously today isn't Thursday 29th of April. So I'm, I'm making an assumption that that's not um, correct. Either that Indeed. or we've got a spontaneous meeting. Indeed, we the meeting was due to be on the 29th of April, but because one of the items on the agenda, the pay policy statement was needs to go to April uh, for council, we had to bring that meeting forward to today. So I hope that clarifies it. But I think in terms of accuracy of what was agreed at the last meeting, I think the 29th of April date was what we agreed, albeit subsequently we have moved it forward. Uh, hopefully that clarifies that. Um, members, any other points of accuracy with the minutes? No, 
OK, we'll move forward then to the main items, starting with item number four, the pay policy statement, which is begins on page five of our agendas members. I'm going to open that now and invite uh, Susan Gardner Craig to introduce the item, please. Thank you, Chair. This is the annual report on the pay policy statement for the Council. Uh, members will be uh, mindful that in previous years uh, I've brought this revised pay policy statement forward for your consideration. It sets out all of the requirements that were part of the Localism Act and the Hutton Review on fair pay. Uh, in terms of explaining the way that we remunerate staff, including pay, charges, fees, uh, allowances, etc., and any benefits or performance bonuses that the council uh, gives to um, such staff. It also considers the uh, pay gap between the lowest and the highest paid staff within the council and gives details in terms of any uh, exit uh, payments that we might make in terms of redundancies or settlements. Um, so the pay policy statement has been updated from last year uh, to make sure that the pay uh, points that are set out in the pay policy are the correct ones for this year. Uh, and it also has updated in terms of any other fees and charges that, um, that uh, our officers are uh, provided with. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions Okay, thank you for that, Susan. Um, members also, so we do have the lead member for finance here as well, so if there's any questions, I'm sure between the two of them, uh, they'll be able to answer those. Um, so I'm going to invite any questions now on the pay policy statement. We are being asked to um, recommend this for approval to full council. So if there's any questions, members, please do ask them now. Starting with the vice chair, Councillor Percival. Thank you, chair. Um, first of all, thank you to officers for putting putting this um, paper together. Um, I had a question on um, 1.6 page 11 about progression through grades. Um, would you mind just talking us through um, how that happens? Does the pay review process and, uh, and increment take place on an annual basis subject to satisfactory performance? Through you, Chair. Uh, so the Council's got a grading structure that allows progression through um, six points on the pay scale in total um, uh, and performance is judged on good performance, not just satisfactory performance. Um, that happens uh, during the year as part of one to ones uh, and any performance um, concerns that might occur throughout the year. And we assess whether people are going to uh, be uh, able to have their increment just after Christmas. So at the moment we are currently collecting the evidence and sign off from all managers in terms of whether a, an increment will be awarded to staff that haven't reached the top of their grade. Thank you. Was, was that OK, Dawn? Yes, thank you. Do you know, Su um, Susan, roughly um, what percentage of staff do progress to the next increment on a, on a typical annual basis? So I'd probably say that about 30% of our staff are already at the top of their grade um, and the remainder of the staff, unless people um, are on a performance improvement programme or they've been issued with a warning for um, something under the disciplinary policy, etc., they will um, normally progress. Um, and I would probably say that at the moment we've got less than six people that won't be progressing. So it's quite a high percentage. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we have Heather Williams, please. Thank you, Chairman. It was just on page nine. It's, it's more about process because in the introduction it says um, the pay policy statement must be approved formally by the full council by the end of March. Um, my understanding is with us today to go to April's meeting. Um, is that a problem or is that something that's sort of at our discretion and if so should we change it to the end of April maybe to make it fit? Uh, Susan can someone come back on that? Yeah through you chair. Um, so normally um, it would expect be expected to have gone through before the end of March 
Uh, one of the reasons that it hasn't gone through uh, so far this year is because we've been waiting to hear what the requirements are for gender pay gap reporting. Um, they, as you perhaps are aware, gender pay gap reporting was um, put on hold last year because of the COVID um, situation. And this year, employers were anticipating that we would have to do that piece of work before the end of March this year. But that uh, requirement to report on gender pay uh, has again been delayed until later this year. Um, so that's why it hasn't gone through so far. But in terms of process, I think we're fine to um, publish it just outside of the, the usual 31st of March requirement. Okay. Chairman, if, so I, we'll, if I could come back. Yeah, please. Come what, back. I was, what I was suggesting is we change our document to say full council by the end of April. Um, or or is that sort of is that not a deadline within our control, if that makes sense? Because I was just thinking if we change it to April, then then all would fit and all be well. Any, any comments, Susan? Um, I, I'm quite comfortable with um, either leaving it as it stands or um, putting it in until the end of April. The only question I've got at the moment with uh, end of April is that we are we are just contemplating um, again some process issues and legislation about whether we will be able to hold full uh, annual council in May um, because of the legislation around. Uh, virtual meetings. Um, so if I change it to April and we don't hold the April meeting, it's likely to slip to May. OK, so your, your view would be to, it's fine as it is, but we've, it is if we put fine. to April, it might be, it might be scuppering ourselves Sub essentially. Subject to change. Hold a meeting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's probably a bit better to leave it as it is. OK, thank you. Um, was there anything else, Heather, or was that it? That was it really, thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, next we have Councillor Daunton, please. Um, thank you, Chairman. Uh, so my question really is about bonus payments, page 11. Um, if someone is recruited close to the top of the pay scale um, in order to, to recruit that person, then they will quickly arrive at a bonus payment or, or, or might quickly arrive where the case where they would be in line for bonus payment. Um, so how is that dealt with? Uh, through you, Chair. Um, we don't actually pay any bonus payments for staff at all at the moment. Um, all of our staff are, are um, able to go through the salary scale, which is six points of progression. But once they reach the top of the scale, we don't actually pay bonuses. There is provision within our pay policies um, to pay things like honorariums if somebody has done more than their job would expect. But that is a one off payment for a specific piece of work or a specific uh, act activity that somebody has done, but we don't actually pay bonuses. OK, thank you. Thanks. Was that it, Claire? Yes, for now, thank you. Thank you. Um, I can't see anyone else indicating, members. Are there any further questions for, for Susan before we move on? No, I'm not seeing anyone indicating. So. We have the report in front of us. We have a recommendation which is on page five of our reports. And that is simply that Council approves of the pay policy statement for 2021. Uh, Susan, surely we need to uh, say we're referring it to full council as well or something about sending it to full council? Yes, of course, Chair. Because we aren't actually approving it. We're just no, you're not. recommending no, you're... it to full council. Yes. OK, so do we need to edit that recommendation then to, to make that clear? Um, Patrick will make sure that that's clear in the minutes. OK, fine. And I, okay, I'll, so make the, I'll make the changes to the report as it goes to council. That's great, thank you. OK, members, so that's the recommendation we have. Um, I haven't had any dissent at the moment, so can I assume that we can take this by affirmation? If anyone isn't agreed uh, or would like to abstain, can you indicate now, please? Otherwise, I'll assume it's all <clears throat> I can't see anything, so 
I'll take that by affirmation that that is approved. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda. Bear with. Can get used to paper agendas again. Um, is item five, which starts on page 19 of our agendas. And I'm just going to flick to that now. And it's the six sickness and absence reports for the last quarter. And I believe we have Chloe Smith introducing this for us. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you, you, go. Thank you very much. Um, so this is the sickness absence report for quarter three of this year. Um, overall, we have seen a slight increase in the number of sickness absence within our staff um, for quarter three compared to quarter two and quarter one this year. Um, but it's worth noting that we are still looking at lower figures overall than we were um, pre lockdown. So we have still seen a, a decrease compared to last year. Um, our BVPI figure for this quarter is 2.2 days per FTE. That's a decrease of 22.8% compared to quarter three last year. Uh, and within this period, we saw a total of 1,258 and a half days absence compared to 1,155 days absence in the previous quarter. So it's an increase of 103 days um, over a three month period. Um, the number of employees absence in quarter three was 110, which is the same number of employees as quarter two. Um, so it's the same number of staff. Unfortunately, that does mean that the staff are having slightly longer absences and we have seen an increase in the number of long term absences. Um, that represents 19 percent of our staff overall. So 19 percent had an absence um, in quarter three. Uh, of the total days lost for quarter three, 60% of them were attributed to staff um, who work for our shared waste service. Um, so we do traditionally see a higher number of absences within that workforce. Um, of those, 15 employees within that service had uh, long term absences. Those staff have mostly now returned to work. Um, a few of those staff have either left employment or were dismissed and five of them are currently um, being furloughed. Um, of the reasons for absence, our highest categories remain uh, stress, depression and mental health, um, followed by other musculoskeletal. Um, for stress, depression and mental health, we have had 10 employees who were on long term sick leave. Um, and the remaining were short term. We've had a total of 22 employees who had long term sick leave um, within this period. So there were the 15 at the depot and then a further seven elsewhere in the council. Um, and Appendix B shows a breakdown of um, those employees, which service area they're in and the total number of days that they had off as requested following the last um, employment and staffing committee meeting. Um, for to remain um, anonymous, we have labelled each employee simply employee one, employee two, um, but that gives you an indication of where the numbers were and how many days they were having. Um, within this quarter, we've continued to work hard to try and support our employees' health um, and their return to work. So some of the actions that we've taken are that we've moved um, all of our sickness management process virtually. Um, so we're now holding uh, virtual welfare meetings with staff who are off sick, um, as well as regular um, catch up meetings with employees who have recently returned and any um, case hearings needed for employees whose health um, has not returned. Um, we have also started running a weekly report within the HR department to pick up any absences held in the previous week and the reasons for those. Um, and any absences that have been attributed for stress, depression or mental health, um, an advisor has been assigned to it and we've made contact either with the employee or the manager to make sure that we're offering them support. Um, we've also continued running our mental health wellbeing programme, including weekly wellbeing sessions, um, regular advice and tips being offered um, and several training courses. 
Uh, we've also had quite a strong push for our DSE assessments. Um, so to make sure that staff who are working from home are working in a safe environment with their equipment set up um, to prevent them having other musculoskeletal um, injuries. We've been really encouraging staff to carry out a DSE assessment. Um, and since this report was written, we've actually had a further push um, to ensure that staff have um, completed that assessment. Um, and we've also uh, undertaken a couple of initiatives to try and encourage staff to get active. So reminding them things to like um, taking regular breaks from the screen and doing stretches. Um, as well as this month, we've joined up with the um, Everybody Health for Everybody Run initiative. So we've got a team from the council um, who are undertaking a fundraising exercise um, while also getting out running and walking. Um, and that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, thank you as well for including the details about uh, COVID related illness. I think we asked for that at the last meeting and um, it's, it's useful to actually see see the figures because I know those are, are different from obviously the, the other health issues that we just mentioned. Um, so I'm going to ask if anyone has any questions for Chloe now on the report. And we do have one from Councillor Daunton. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, well, it's just a very practical question. So um, when people report in sick and then report that they're returning to work, how is that managed? I mean, obviously, they're not turning up at South Camps Hall and sitting at a desk. So just the practical uh, aspects of how you manage that. Um, and does it differ from department to department or is there a council wide uh, way of doing that? Oh, thank you. Um, so the process currently is that employees notify their line manager um, on the first day of their absence, and it's actually the line manager who then notifies the council. Um, so they complete a form and submit that to the HR department. Um, when the re employee returns to work, it's again they they contact their manager to let them know that they're signing on, um, and the manager will then hold what we call a return to work interview, um, which is where they complete the form, um, number of days absence, reasons and any supports that are put in place, but also a chance for the manager to actually talk to the employee and make sure that they are. Um, and then we expect the employee and the manager to sort of maintain contact for the next couple of days to make sure that the employee has recovered and there are no further issues. Um, there is a slight variation between departments um, with the shared waste service um, because they have a different reporting process um, and a different cutoff time, obviously, because they start their work. Uh, I think it's normally before six o'clock they start work, so they're expected to notify their managers earlier in the day um, and they may not be able to hold a return to work interview immediately upon their return, but they still should hold it within the first day or two. Um, this is also something that's in the process of changing as part of our introducing our new um, HR and payroll system, which goes live from 1st of April. Um, so it will be less of a paper based system and managers will be able to report the absences directly onto the um, system rather than going through HR, which will hopefully help us improve our ability to um, contact employees when we need to and put those supports in place because we'll have the live data constantly rather than waiting for forms to be input. Thank you. Thank you for that. And then we have a question from Councillor Sarah Ching Johnson. Hi, yeah, I've got a couple of questions. Um, on page 29, um, we're seeing um, a huge change in uh, compared to previous quarters of last year for the genital urinary um, reason. Um, was there a specific, did something happen? Or do we know why there's such a big jump? Um, thank you. I think. From my memory, um, there's the, the reason is that we traditionally don't see very many absences for those reasons. Um, and I think we've had three employees um, who have had fairly significant numbers of time off for those reasons. So uh, I'm, I don't think it's so much a change in trend as an unfortunate. Um, some employees have had significant absences um, associated with those reasons. Thank you. And then the other one was where it says um, other musculoskeletal. So we're um, 
we're obviously separating out back um but is there any um benefit to us creating other musculoskeletal reasons just in terms of being able to uh promote remedial efforts in the right way um I, I see what you mean about being more specific around what those actual reasons are because other musculoskeletal does encapsulate quite a, a wide area um i think traditionally the categories for the absences other musculoskeletal was added on afterwards but susan may be able to add some more information for that um we do when we get the return to work interview forms um someone within our department does review them to see if what the specific reasons are so if an employee is able to identify that they have a particular injury or condition um that is sometimes flagged up with an advisor to then put supports in place um, the other thing we use is um, we have something called the other musculoskeletal checklist so when someone is returning from a other musculoskeletal related absence in addition to the return to work interview form they're also asked to complete this checklist which helps identify specific um, supports that could be put in place so i think if we separated it out further we may be generating more work um, for managers in terms of having those supports and ideas all in one place um okay understood thanks was was there anything you wanted to add to that susan or is that encapsulated the answer no i think that's covered it thank you chair thank you was there another question sarah from yourself no i'm good thank you okay um members i can't see anyone else that indicated they'd like to ask a question um, before we move off this item, one last opportunity if anyone has any last minute questions. I can't see anyone indicating, so I think we're purely being asked to note this. So we, we don't need to decide anything on this one. So I say, Chloe, thank you very much. <laughs> Good report, and I'm sure we'll see you at one of our next meetings. Um, moving on then to the next item, which is item six. Uh, which is an oral update on the disability confident task and finish group. Um, so at the last meeting, we had a request from uh, Sarah to pause the work, but we promised to keep checking in to see if there was, uh, see what the current status of it was and if there was capacity to start it up again. So I'm guessing it's just over to you, Sarah, if that's OK for a, a quick update on where we are. Um, yeah, no, I, I think we made the right decision given how busy everyone has been in lockdown, I think. Um, uh, to pause the work. So I think what we should do, uh, what I will do is review with, with Susan um, how her office's capacity is um, 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 where we are with potentially restarting that work and we can we can come back to the committee with it with a firm date. That would be my okay. proposal. Okay, so you'll liaise with Susan offline will you Sarah? Yeah, I think that would be the best. Okay, that's great. Um, well members, opportunity for any questions of Sarah or, or officers at this stage? Obviously there's not much to ask questions about but but, uh, but thank you Sarah anyway, for your oh, Susan, continued efforts. Susan has a hand up. Yeah. Oh, don't you? I'm sorry I can't see hands. Did you want to ask say something Susan? Yes it was just on the disability confident. Um, I'm pleased to report that my officer that's been leading on this has just completed the level two uh, assessment work for that. Uh, so we're we're continuing to progress uh, that piece of work uh, even during lockdown, but it will be good to restart the task and finish group. OK, good. So it sounds like we might have a, a, a more of a, a fuller update at next the next meeting. That's great. Chair, Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Chairman, may I just ask it when we restart the disability um, uh, group, can we just have a small briefing note to tell you where we got to? Because it's been a little while and I might need a little briefing to see where we actually got to. <laughs> just, to just, just for my benefit, I'm sure other people might want to see the paper as well. Thank you, Chairman. Absolutely. I'm sure that'll be fine, Susan, if that's OK. Chairman, yes, very much so, Chair. Um, Councillor Dawson. Yes, thank, thank you. I wasn't sure how to. Um, 
so uh, I just wanted to ask Susan, has lockdown sh thrown up any issues, um, any disability issues that we might want the task and finish group to look at? Um, I think that lockdown has um, brought to the surface a number of issues, particularly with people working from home and those that need um, you know, pro proper equipment to address an, a disability issue. There's been some challenges there, um, specifically where they've needed accessible um, software and some of our systems have not reacted well to that being at home working uh, rather than actually in the office uh, working. So um, I've been trying to work with my colleagues in the IT department to make sure that they're aware of those staff that need extra support um, and trying to put that in place. But it has been quite a challenge. Uh, and I suppose the other area is around um, an individual's ability to work from home if they need spe specific um, furniture. So mm. rising desks, um, or specifically designed chairs, for example, um, that that has been a bit of a challenge, but I'm pleased to say that we've been able to overcome most of that. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I think that's all the questions on that. Um, so members, before we close, it's worth noting that the date of the next meeting is the 23rd of July. Uh, so obviously, if anything pressing, as it has done today, comes up before, then obviously I might be calling on you to, to reconvene if anything occurs between now and the 23rd of July. Uh, other than that, we have no more business on the agenda today. So I will just say... Chairman, may, may I just say that I've just looked on the 23rd of July is a Friday. May I ask if um, people could look at that date once again, please? <laughs> OK. <laughs> a fr a Friday is um... not... I would I would like to second Councillor Howe's um, request because actually <laughs> schools have already broken up or just uh, broken up um, on that Friday for us here. So any and I would like to um, to third it actually because it would clash with grants. OK, fine. Well, uh, we'll take another look at the date and, and recirculate. You, That's very kind of you. We'll recirculate a more appropriate one before there's a mutiny on our hands. But. Uh, <laughs> But no, thank you. Well, thank you very much, everyone, members, officers. Uh, I'll draw the meeting to a close there and ask Liam if you'd mind stopping the live feed. I will close the meeting and uh, confirm to you when it's done. Thank you.